Not anymore. Ah, okay. So let, let, let me try it again. Okay. Something went wrong with the ship. So, so. And now? Oh, okay, good. So then I suppose I should go ahead, right? Good. So, um, well, it is obviously a great pleasure to be invited here for George Fest. Um, and I would like to, yeah, so I would like to say a few personal words about, well, I've, I've known George for a long time and we have had many, many interactions. So let me talk a little bit about, well, about our, our sort of common work and, and, and what, what, I, what I owe to George. So I met him more than 20 years ago in, in Munich. So at that time it was in, in Wessels Group, Julius Wessels Group, where George was a frequent, frequent visitor. Um, and well, Julius West already, he liked very much to go to the Corfu meetings. And I think at some point he brought half of his group to Corfu, including myself. And that was my first um, time that I participated in Corfu. I think at that point it was still in the old castle. And well, and after that, I, I came back many, many times, I think probably at least at every other year. And so somehow this Kofu meetings, they became one of one of the fixed points on, on my scientific map. And I think this is really one of George's great achievements that he 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 created this this series of events and, and in, in this in that way he, he supported really a whole a very large part of the scientific community. And that so for that I'm I'm extremely grateful. And in fact, I, I met several of my collaborators in these meetings in Kofu, and I'm sure that this applies to, to many of us. Um, now, on the scientific side, so one thing that I, I, I particularly value about, about George is that he's, I mean, he's very well grounded, as you know, as a particle theorist, so this is real physics, and, but still he's very, very interested in, in new ideas related in particular to non-commutative spaces or generalized geometric objects, which is something that I like. And, and whenever we had these meetings in, in Kaofu about these whatever non-commutative structures, he always managed to, to, to keep things a little bit down to earth and, and try to avoid escaping into higher spheres. And I think that was a very good thing and that's very important. Now, um, in fact, so let me, um, I would actually like to explain a little bit one scientific um, theme that we worked a lot together. And then after me, Maya will, will say more, some more, more general things about other aspects. Um, so one idea which uh, George somehow was always fascinated about is, is to use fuzzy spaces as extra dimensions. And this was also in, in, in collaboration with John Mador, uh, and, and and these things kind of developed when we were when we met also in Munich and when he came to Munich also before that. And this is something which is related to one of George's sort of big themes, which is the corset space dimensional reduction. And it's kind of a little bit of a generalization of this key. And so we both were interested and we started collaborating on that around 2004. And we made, I believe it was six joint papers um, on, on, on related things up to now. And I would actually like to, to say a little bit about the, about the, the, the physics and, and, and the, the scientific reasons behind that. Um, I'm not sure about the audience, but so here is a one page sort of executive summary of, of the main idea. So if, if you get across this, this thing uh, today, I'm, I'm very happy. So I suppose that, that you know that the idea of Calusa Klein is very old, uh, just the idea of working not just in three plus one dimensions, but adding some extra compact extra dimensional space, and you get a lot of structure, very useful idea. Now, the, 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 the next step here is to use not some ordinary geometry for these extra dimensions, but some finite quantum geometry or matrix geometry. And so mathematically, these are basically the quantized compact symplectic spaces. And the main point is that they have only finitely many Calusa Klein. So there's only a finite number of excitations on these spaces. And that's, that's the main difference to the usual geometric setting. And uh, in other words, there is an intrinsic ultraviolet cutoff scale, lambda n. And geometrically, these are typically corset spaces. So the simplest example is that of a sphere. And that's enough for today. And the first paper that where, where these kind of generalized Calusa Klein theories were considered is, is in 2003 by George and Eskiari Mador and Manuselis. 
And then somehow I, I also got very interested. And a few years later, we wrote uh, we wrote a, a paper together. And somehow the main sort of new new point there was that we realized that this is something which happens in completely ordinary three plus one dimensional field theory. So you don't have to write down any 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 funny new theories. It's there is a mechanism which makes such co fuzzy compact dimensions arise dynamically with a totally ordinary renormalizable three plus one dimensional quantum field theory. And I would actually like to explain this a little bit here, if I may. And the basic mechanism is just good old spontaneous symmetry breaking and the Higgs effect. It's nothing new, it's nothing exotic. And the main, the result of this thing, so the main qualitative features of these new phases in gauge theory is the following. So this higher dimensional space, so space time, Minkowski space times this fuzzy geometry, it behaves at low energies. Well, of course it behaves like just Minkowski phase itself. So it's just three plus one dimensions. Just like Kaluza Klein. There is a Kaluza Klein scale, and below that scale, it's a three, three plus one dimension theory. Now, there is some intermediate energy scale, so higher than the Kaluza Klein scale and, lump, and lower than the cutoff scale, where it behaves like a higher dimensional field theory with all the features that we know from higher dimensional field theory, as familiar from string theory, and so on and so forth. But then the new thing is that if you go to even higher energies, so higher energies even than this cutoff, then again it behaves like a three plus one dimensional. So, so that's the that's the interesting thing, and I will explain why this happens. It's, it's really it's, it's quite a, an, an easy mechanism. And then finally, um, the last step is that the same mechanism can then, of course, also be applied to space time itself. So not just some extra dimensional geometry, but even space time space times themselves can arise through using the same mechanism, and that happens within matrix. I will very briefly mention it in, in the end, and. Yeah, you'll see why. Um, so here is just uh, one or two technical slides. Um, so this is a completely standard action for SUN gauge theory on Minkowski space with, let's say, let's add three scalar fields in your drawing. So phi, A are three scalar fields, and they are coupled as usual to the UN valued gauge field, and there is a potential. So and this is, again, so this is a three plus one dimension or a four dimensional field theory. And we take the potential to be a renormalizable, renormalizable one, so very down to earth, and it should respect the SO3 symmetry. And we can actually write down the most general one, but let me here write down a, just a simple version, which has this term, which is a, a quadratic term, which is well known from supersymmetric and Mills theory. And let's add a cubic term, you can think of it as a, as a soft Susie breaking term. That's all. So this theory generates fuzzy extra dimensions, and it's very easy to see because you can rewrite this potential in that way. So it's a square of some f, and f is, 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 is this combination. So it's, so it's a combinator minus a linear term. And then there is a minus and a master. This minus is very important. And then it's, it's because there is no master up here. So let's look at this potential. And because there is a minus, you know immediately that there is going to be a non tri so so the vacuum with the lowest energy is not going to be the trivial one, but it's a non trivial vacuum. So there is a spontaneous symmetry breaking. And you can easily convince yourself that the minimum, the global minimum of the potential is achieved if these three scalar fields satisfy these commutative relations. Because they are they are adjoined, so they are there matrices, if you like. And well, this is of course just a commutative relation of SU2. So the simplest vacuum or the basic vacuum in, in, in this theory in the simplest case is just the scalar fields taking value as generators of SU2. So just some large dimensional generator of SU2. And now, then it's easy to understand that such a vacuum where these three matrices take this particular VEF, vacuum expectation value, well, you should interpret it in terms of a sphere. It's a quantized sphere, it's a fuzzy sphere. This is a very well-known story. And the easiest way to see it is just to note that the sum of the square of these matrices um, is a unit matrix with some effective toughness. That's all you have to see. So it's you have a vacuum condensation in an NH theory, and the non-trivial vacuum is given by angular momentum generators. And that means, well, then you can sort of see it, it has something to do with a sphere. But in fact, it can be made more precise because 
What do you do in field theory if you have a vacuum? You just study the fluctuations around this vacuum. So let's add the most general fluctuations around this vacuum. It's a matrix, but this matrix can be interpreted as a function on this fuzzy sphere. That, that's a simple mathematical group theoretical fact. Let, let's accept it. And that means that the fluctuations around such a vacuum are actually functions on Minkowski space times the sphere. So that's a product space. That is the higher dimensional effective geometry. And then it is a simple way of just working out the fluctuations spectrum. And you see that through the usual Higgs effect, it's really precisely the Higgs effect that you know from gauge theories, um, this non-trivial Kaluza Klein, like most, they acquire a mass. And the mass spectrum is precisely the same as in, in Kaluza Klein theories where the masses are the Kaluza Klein matrix. And you have really have a one-to-one -one correspondence between the usual higher dimensional Kaluza Klein picture and these fluctuations up to the cutoff. This is one that is only a finite, finite number of Kaluza Klein points. So that's basically what we did here. And then the same mechanism, you can generalize it to all kinds of slightly more general cases. You can include fermions, it still works. You can consider more interesting theories like R before theories. And then the low energy theory actually becomes physically quite interesting. So you're getting really into the ballpark of, of realistic or near, well, near realistic um, particle physics models. Um, there are ways to get three generations. You can consider inter intersecting brains and also all these things we did together with George. Um, yeah, so, so that's the, the story about fuzzy extra dimensions in field theory. One slide to tell you that the same mechanism actually also can work for space time. And, and then it's easy to see why, because basically just drop the field theory part and only keep the matrix part. And then you have a matrix model. And in fact, there is a very, there is now a one preferred matrix model, which is related to string theory, the IKKD model. I will not say anything about it. Um, and then you have the same mechanism. So you have not your vacua. These vacua acquire a geometric meaning to become brains and fluctuations around the brains describing the physics. And in that case, what now that's the one last statement I want to make is in, in the one loop effective action here, you actually find the induced Einstein Hilbert term. And this works actually only because you need again fuzzy extra dimensions. So, so that's the, the, the link again to the story of George. So in these matrix models, if you you can have back here, which have uh, again the product structure, something like space-time by space time with fuzzy extra dimensions. And if you have these fuzzy extra dimensions, there is an effective Newton constant which you can compute, and it's actually set by the producer Klein scale of these extra dimensions. So here this kind of this closes the story. And that's about, I hope that this will convince you that these are these are kind of interesting um phenomena that arise here. And this was the story that one one subject that we did together with George. Now Maya is going to tell you more about other other aspects. So let me just summarize the scientific take home message from from this one aspect which I focused on. So fuzzy extra dimensions arise in non-trivial vacuum of your Mills theories with scalar fields in your joint. It's just a basic kinetics mechanism. It works in field theory. It also works in matrix models. In matrix models, the same mechanism allows you to even recover space time. If it's realistic or not, we don't know, but so this is the kind of mechanism um, that we studied. And fuzzy, the fact the extra dimensions are actually crucial. And uh, But now let me close with a more personal note and let me thank you, George, first of all, for building this great venue, which is ISA in Corfu, which I always love to come and I will come again in two weeks. Um, so thanks for our, all our meetings and thanks for nurturing our nice vibrant community, I believe. Thanks for your friendship, collaboration, and all the support. And so let me congratulate for your amazing achievements. Okay, all the best. So I pass on to Maya, right? Oh, so maybe we can now I can share your screen. Yeah, that, that's the thing. Um, so now we are trying to set up Maya's screen and we are not sure if it shows properly. I'll do it again. Thank you.
believe it works. Maybe we should ask them again if it works. Yes, yes, sounds good. Um, can you can you write in the chat whether you can see Maya's um slides? Sam, we can hear you. We don't see the remote. Okay. okay, so let me open it again. Um, share screen because it opens only in a very small way here. That's the strange thing. So, here, why is it so small? Okay, let me start. Sorry? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but we don't see it anymore. That's the thing. But maybe it's here or not. No. Well, it's. it's... Ah, yes, 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 yes. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, okay, so I structured my talk or uh, greeting a little bit differently. I thought about what we could, uh, what connects the non commutative part of George's work with everything else. Um, and I did it a little bit historically, so similarly to Harold, we first met um, with George probably in Bayerisch Zell or in Munich. And uh, a group from Belgrade started to work on non-commutative field theory, and there were a lot of meetings. We were sharing ideas very uh, fast, and uh, so, and it, I mean, there were many <clears throat> places to meet, like Bayerisch Zell workshops. There were two big Adriatic meetings in Dubrovnik, then several schools in Serbia. And uh, a little bit later, uh, the non-commutativity was introduced in Corfu program. Um, and at that time, already Adriatic meetings in Dubrovnik lost funding or lost their focus. So <clears throat> Julius West thought that Corfu is uh, the new place for Adriatic meetings, which and it remained till today. All other more or less workshops or, or conferences are not um, uh, meant on, uh, done on the regular basis anymore, so which is very important for, for, for the topic, I think. So this is one picture from this um, uh, from the very first days in the background of George, you see the Belgrade group and we are all fuzzy and we were all fuzzy about everything at that time. I mean, about the topic, the ways uh, uh, one can use it for physics and so on. So I think George started work working on these topics around 2001 and, or two. And what I concluded that his interest was basically the particle physics, because this is roughly speaking the, the main thing in his work and how to unify a kind of, uh, uh, or to invent unified theories, which are obviously at, in, in the normal, uh, I mean, in, in the typical theories, they are always done as uh, tensor products of space-time and internal symmetries. You can always have <clears throat> Lorentz or Poincaré symmetry tensored with the internal symmetries. So um, I suppose George realized at the very beginning that uh, they are, that non-commuted or in particular non-commutative geometry offers offers uh, new possibilities and can give new models. And that is, uh, that is I think, why he joined. Um, and then the first papers came in 2003, as far as I have seen, and then 
These were two of these unified theories from fuzzy extra dimensions, and the other paper was dimensional reduction over fuzzy cosset spaces. And his first collaborators were Paula Schieri, John Mador, and, and Harold Steinecker. And of course, then there were uh, George's PhD students that collaborated. I hope I wrote them all. So this is one thing uh, that, uh, that George works uh, worked a lot and works a lot. There are many papers and probably some other collaborators and an important part of his work. But also in 2003, George started working with Mador on non-commutative geometry in the narrow sense and applied to gravity in particular. So without particles or particle physics included. And uh, this, this first paper was already very interesting. <clears throat> the title was Can Non-Commutativity Resolve the Big Bang Singularity? That's the other great idea or great hope of non-commutativity to make, uh, to resolve the singularities of the solutions of Einstein equations. And that was written with Maceda and Manos Ellis, who were the PhD students of both uh, people. And then also I, I joined uh, the topic. And there were several papers, I don't know, maybe four or five, were discussed. Uh, basically, the topic was just to, to um, analyze gravity. Uh, described by the so-called non-commutative frame formalism or to analyze the properties of the fuzzy spaces and relate them to exact solutions to Einstein equations or to obtain the, the, um, the commutative limits and to show that there is a relation. Our main topic for many uh, discussions or, or uh, trials was to, to obtain Kastner geometry as an, uh, I mean, classical Kastner geometry as a commutative limit of the, of, the, of the fuzzy version. But also we worked on cosmological models. But the main thing that came out is that we, we worked, um, worked out perturbations of non-commutative solutions, like we obtained the, the analogy of gravitational waves. We discussed what's called the Poisson energy or what would be the energy momentum tensor, which could be related directly to non-commutativity and so on. And this interest for non-commutative gravity remained uh, as George in the previous, I don't know, five or more years um, continues to work on this, but from slightly different perspective, which is probably more uh, close to a um, particle physicist, and that is to build a gauge theory of gravity. And this work is, uh, there are several papers and the, this work is mainly done with, with his students and collaborators from National and TUA. Okay, so I have also, so to relate personally to this topic, as uh, Harold also said, there is a great possibility somehow to include extra dimensions or to explain things via non-commutative geometry. And um, the fact is that uh, kind of non-commutative spaces have many more degrees of freedom than the, the ordinary commutative ones. And the obvious thing is to tensor the Minkowski space to some non-commutative space, which could be discrete or fuzzy. I mean, theoretically obvious, but, uh, and there are many, important uh, models how to do this. One model is this cone lot model or cone uh, standard model which, where the internal symmetries are not uh, just formal, but they are really non-commutative, uh, non-commutative, 
commutative coordinates or you have internal non-commutative space um, explained as an internal space of gauge symmetries. And another example is what uh, Harold already uh, talked of is that if you discuss uh, uh, certain matrix models, UN or SUN matrix models, you can, apart from the gauge symmetries, you can get a gravity as an emergent, the usual gravity, which we, I mean, it's a little bit specific, but what we did um, recently in our group is that um, uh, we wanted to discuss the sitter or anti sitters fuzzy spaces, which were represented uh, with the help of, of uh, conformal groups or the sitter group or <clears throat> SOPQ groups in general, depending on the dimension of the space. And then in these fuzzy spaces or in these non commutative spaces, which are naturally curved because they are implied from the group, I mean, they have the structure of a group. You can identify what are the coordinates, what are the derivations or what would be partial derivations in, in the usual sense. And you can formulate differential geometry and thereby, of course, then you can discuss fields on them. We discussed or we uh, uh, scalar fields. So you can formulate klein gordon equations, equation, for example. Um, and then you can try to solve it and compare to the klein gordon equation, for example, in the sitter space in four dimensions. Uh, first thing is that you can see very nicely non uh, commutative limit. You find a set of solutions with that exactly in the commutative limit go to the basis or uh, orthogonal basis of um, solutions in the sitter space. But uh, what is interesting, so that's as much as you can do so to say representation free, but if you go to uh, some fixed concrete representations like what we did is, is um, uh, principal continuous series in four dimensions and also in two dimensions, <clears throat> then you see that exactly you have additional uh, freedom or additional degrees of freedom in the case of four dimensional deceiver, and it is a two sphere, I mean, you can solve it. So it seems that somehow this representation of uh, non commutative deceiver space has a commutative limit, which is ordinary deceiver space, but it has additional quantum degrees of freedom. You cannot see in the limit, but which exist there and in, uh, influence or interfere uh, at higher energies with your physics. So therefore, I think this, uh, I mean, this is also another possibility or another model how non-commutativity can bring you more or how non-commutative spaces in fact capture some essential of the quantum behavior. Uh, so this should be explored anyway in more details in in models. Okay, so coming back to George, what I wanted also to mention is his activism. Of course, we all know know him, and uh, this activism is uh, has many aspects of it. Uh, Perhaps the most important is his um, uh, effort to organize meetings in Corfu and somehow not only to, to uh, boost uh, Greek physics, but basically to boost uh, uh, research in our, in fact, in particle physics, string theory, also non-commutative theories and so on, cosmology. As we all know, meetings have very important uh, role to exchange ideas. So 
but also it's true that uh, George uh, took part in many international research projects and uh, did a lot of research apart from Corfu Summer Institute. I would like to say uh, that also George supports and supported uh, local physics, so, so to say, let's say, southeastern Europe or, or Balkans physics, at least by his presence, his um, um, many discussions also with our um, with our officials and so on. Uh, for example, CNET uh, network or um, conferences in Belgrade and in other places in Serbia in modern mathematical physics, so, which was important, I think, to all of us. And I wanted to, um, on the funny side, um, mention that obviously completely local activism, Greek or, or even Athens activism, we were included at, at least I went to two or three demonstrations in Athens on various, uh, various uh, reasons. For example, we demonstrated against the University Act in Greece that included that introduced private universities. And I was very glad that I did that, I must say. So um, maybe there is no need to to say too many nice words since we all know them. I would uh, just congratulate George and wish him uh, good health and soon ball. Okay. And the last speaker before the last break is Professor Apostolos Pilapsis. Uh, I would like to thank you for, for being invited. Uh, I'd like to thank you for, uh, for being invited to uh, George Fest. Uh, I think uh, the... Okay. Uh, I think I have some problem yeah, with the microphone. Is that vaccine? Okay. Okay. It's okay. Can you hear me now uh, acoustically? Very good. So I, I'm very uh, happy to be here, to be invited to George's uh, first. Uh, George has made, made a lot of uh, scientific contributions. I will not uh, focus on them. Uh, uh, I will uh, mainly uh, discuss okay, some of the other aspects uh, which are related to Corfu uh, Summer Institute, Corfu series. So uh, perhaps I should say that I was here as an undergraduate in 1984, uh, attending uh, either the, the second, I think the second uh, uh, school, summer school by Corfu, by, supported by, by the school. And also as a PhD student, uh, I think in the 90s. So I met uh, important people like John Ellis and Tilly Feldman, one of them I happened to collaborate. Later on, I could not dream about that. So uh, and actually what I want to say that uh, are not, from now on, is not mainly related to the audience uh, here, but mainly of the audience that was before, I mean, to uh, uh, people that are making uh, making decision the uh, decision makers right so the conference George likes to establish a center of international excellence of research because who some are students of the school for a school uh, for science okay and 
uh, I believe uh, one of the ministers, education ministers we have here, had the problems, ideological problems with Sanders for excellence, actually. Uh, uh, the funding of the school has stopped in 2014. Uh, this mix makes a lot of strain for younger, for junior uh, researchers, Greek researchers, at that time to follow this path. Okay, the path I have. I'm now in the University of Manchester. So this conference is an open conference, is international, has no barriers. There are participants, not only from collective West, but also participants from, from Russia and other places, Japan and so on. I don't know if there are participants from China. Uh, and this is a very good spirit, actually. This is what science should do, okay? With international colliders, everything. That's exactly what should do. we should do. Uh, as you already know, Greece has... Uh, suffered a number of austerity measures from 2009, unjustifiable austerity measures, in my view. And uh, of course, this has hindered, hindered the funding, and also, in some cases, together with the Greek bureaucracy, the completion of this institute, okay, the Kofu Institute. If it was in another country, especially in euro, okay, use euro currency, the system will be, uh, will be completed in a very finite time, like that. And, uh, yeah, and there are other institutes in other places, in other countries, like that, which has been finished and flourished. So, I like to say, I mean, we went yesterday on this celebration, a very beautiful celebration, Greek night, but I'd like to remind you that Greece is not only Zadziki, Suvlaki, drinking, dancing, and tourists. Okay? Fundamental science is also part of the Greek culture. It's not part, it's the heart of the Greek culture. It's not the heart, is the Greek culture. Okay? That's what I want to say. Uh, so all these principles, basic principles, were kept by George. Okay? That's these basic Greek principles and values. I hope that uh, this George fighting spirit, that's what I've seen on him, I've not collaborated with George, but I've seen uh, a lot of fighting spirit. That's what I've met about him. And legacy will be maintained. Okay, will be maintained in the advancement of science, in the spirit of internationalism, and also for the younger or the junior generations. Okay, these are all three different principles. Uh, here, I would like to thank George for the beautiful physics and for the, its fighting spirit and for the Confu Summer Institute.